Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Professor Ayorinde, welcoming you to the last official online review session in organic chemistry for the fall 2012 semester. Uh, before we start our session today, I do want to remind you that the, uh, the final exam is uh, scheduled for tomorrow. That is uh, Thursday, December 6, and the exam, uh, the exam starts at 5 p.m. and ends at 7 p.m. So it is a two-hour exam, and that will be in room 108 of the chemistry building. I also want to let you know that the, uh, the result of the uh, ACS exam that you guys took yesterday, uh, the results have been posted in Blackboard. And I think uh, most of you did uh, very well in that uh, exam. OK, before we get to this session started, let me go ahead and acknowledge uh, those of you who are already here. Here, Aja Walking, Alfreda Woods, Amber Emerson, Brianna Davis, Brianna Neal, Danica Lido, Ellie Rono, Glenn Gladney, Alicia McKinsey, Ines Kifando, Gine Jones, Janelle Radire, Janice Gooding, Jaconda Capers, Kira Graves, Kiera Bradley, Lona Kumo, Mata Margaret Cotton, Maya Reed, Oyo Lucia, Pravin Cheka, Lau Shama, Ryan Chidam Jackson, Kikira Hudson, Sandra Oyekere, and I believe Makimba Saki. You are all welcome. I know we do have a lot of material to cover today, so uh, we will try as much as possible to cover all of this material within the next uh, one hour or so. Okay, to get the session started, I am going to call on uh, Lona Kuma. Can you go ahead and read this question for us? Starting with the arcane shown below, write the structure for the products that will form upon reaction with each of the following reagents. You must indicate zero chemistry when appropriate. If there is no reaction, indicate an R. Okay, very good and thank you. Now what I want us to do here, I do want us to start with this uh, set of uh, uh, problems uh, because it gives you a chance to review all of your, your reagents. As you know, as I always tell you, uh, the, the beginning of uh, your, knowing your reagents is the beginning of knowing organic chemistry. You must know what those reagents do. Okay, so let us start. What we have, we have this molecule here. Can anybody tell us what is the functional group that you have in this molecule? Can you tell us the functional group of interest in this molecule? Okay, alkene, exactly. So in other words, you have a carbon-carbon double bond. You have a carbon-carbon double bond. So what they want us to do here, they do want us to react the carbon-carbon double bond with each one of these reagents right here. Okay, so the center of the focus of this uh, problem is the carbon-carbon double bond. The rest of the molecule has nothing to do with all of these reactions. So let us start. Okay, the first one. We have potassium, uh, potassium hydroxide. What does potassium uh, hydroxide react with a carbon-carbon double bond? Yes or no? Does it react with a carbon-carbon? No, no reaction. At least as far as uh, you guys know for now, uh, under normal condition, potassium hydroxide does not react with a carbon-carbon double bond. So we are going to say this is no reaction for NR. 
Very good. Okay, so now let us quickly go through the rest of them. How about B? B. Potassium permanganate in acidic medium. Can anybody tell us what does this do with carbon carbon double bond? Okay, you, you have to be very specific here. Okay, I see one here. The cliffs to give carboxyl. Very good. Cliffs to give carboxyl. Now, the question is does it always give carboxyl? Does it always give carboxyl? You need to qualify that. Okay, under what condition does it give carboxyl? Under what condition does this reagent cleave a carbon-carbon double bond to give carboxyl? Let us go ahead and write it. Under what condition? Does anybody know when it's mono... Okay, well, exactly what do you mean by mono-substituted? Exactly when there is hydrogen attached to one of the carbon of the carbon-carbon double bond. Exactly. So whenever you have an hydrogen attached to one of the carbon of the any of the carbon of the carbon carbon double bond, just like here, there is an hydrogen here. So therefore, I would expect this carbon here to become a carboxyl carbon, whereas this carbon here will become the carbonyl of a ketone. Okay? So let us write that. So the product here will be We have C A three here, C A three here. Okay, and then we have this here. This carbon becomes carboxyl group and this carbon here becomes carbonyl of a ketone. Okay, so if you can see this here, what have we done here? What we've done, we cleave this bond such that this carbon now is this carbon, and this carbon here is this carbon. Now you notice the rest of the molecule, nothing has happened to the rest of the molecule. Okay? Very good. So let us go to the next one. How about this here? C. What does this do? Hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst. What does that do? Can anybody tell us? Okay, add two hydrogen atoms to the carbon carbon double bond. Now, do you know what the stereochemistry of this reaction is? Cis addition. Excellent, excellent. Okay. So this reagent here, what does it do? You could have hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst. The catalyst could be palladium, either palladium on carbon or, or platinum. Sometimes we could use platinum. OK, any of the metal catalysts would do. In that case, we are going to add two hydrogen atoms across the carbon-carbon double bond. So this molecule becomes, the product becomes this is this here. Let us show the stereochemistry here. Those two hydrogen will be added uh, on the same side of the molecule. Okay? Of course, keep in mind there was originally an hydrogen here to start with, so let us use a different color to show that. Okay, so this reagent, therefore, all it does is to uh, add two hydrogen atoms uh, to the carbon carbon double bond. Okay, very good. Let us go to the next one. How about this one here? D, what does this reagent do? What does this reagent do? By the way, all of these reactions should be revealed to all of you. Alkylation, okay. Uh, not, yeah, to some extent, some kind of alkylation, but let us be specific here. Okay, as a methylene group, 
to the carbon carbon double bond exactly. This reagent here, what it does is to add a methylene group, the CH2, to the carbon carbon double bond. Anytime you see that. So therefore, what do we get as a product? So keep in mind, you need to know all of your reagents. Okay? That is the basis for understanding organic chemistry. So anytime you have diiodomethane, this is what we call the diiodomethane, in the presence of zinc and copper amalgam, which is uh, just a mixture of zinc and, and copper, Okay, this reagent here, what it does is to add a methylene group to the carbon-carbon double bond. So what do, what do we get here? We get this. We get this here, CH2. And then you have a ring system. You have a cyclopropane ring system. And in this case, now you have the methyl group is right here. Keep in mind, this molecule here is on the ring system is on one side of the uh, this cyclohexane uh, ring. So therefore, the stereochemistry is such that you have. <coughs> This hydrogen is going away from you, and this metal is going uh, also going away from you. Or it could be the hydrogen could be coming towards us, the metal coming towards us. In that case, uh, this bond here, the cyclopropane ring, could be going away from us. So you get essentially get two uh, isomers. Okay, and that is what this reagent does. Okay, so let us uh, move on. How about E? Like I say, I'm hoping this is just a review to all of you because you need to know what those reagents do. What does this reagent do? Anybody has an idea? What does it do? You have to be very specific. Ask water in a mechanical fashion. Okay. Okay, so that is hydration. In other words, it will add. The, uh, the components of water, this is hydrogen and hydroxide, across the carbon-carbon double bond in an, a mechanical uh, fashion. And what do we mean by mechanical? Can you, somebody tell me what do we mean by mechanical? Markov means, what do we mean by that? Exactly what do we mean by adding the elements of water uh, in mechanical addition. What does mechanical mean? Hydrogen goes where there is more hydrogen. Excellent. Hydrogen goes where there is more hydrogen. Okay. In that case, let us go ahead and write this product. So we have this reaction. We have this reagent here, mercury acetate. Uh, this reaction occurs in two steps. Okay, of course, mercury acetate in the presence of water, and then you follow that always sodium borohydride. Sodium borohydride. Somebody has a question. The hydroxy group will go to the carbon with the most amount of no. No, the hydroxy group goes to the carbon with less, because the hydrogen goes to the carbon with the more hydrogen. Okay, so in this case, the hydrogen, <coughs> the hydrogen will go here. This is Maconikov. We say Maconikov hydrogen goes to the carbon that has more hydrogen. So the hydrogen goes here, and then the hydroxide goes here. Okay, and so this is the product. 
So when we say Marconic of addition, what, uh, what that means is the hydrogen will go to the carbon that has more hydrogen. Okay, so we have this. Okay, and then this is still here. In this particular instance, there is no specific stereochemistry here. So we have the hydrogen goes here, the hydroxide goes here. Keep in mind there was an hydrogen here to start with, so let me show that with a green color. Okay, so that was the hydrogen that was here before. So this reagent, what it does is to add the element of water. This is what is adding here. And we call this hydration. This is hydration. And it is done in a mechanic of uh, addition. Okay, and so we say this reaction is regio specific. We say this is a regio specific reaction, meaning that uh, the hydrogen go to a particular type, uh, a particular position on the carbon carbon double bond. Okay, let us go to F. Let me erase this. About F, what do we get with F? What does this reagent do? Osmium tetroxide followed by sodium hydrogen sulfide. As to hydroxide in a thin <laughs> fashion. Okay, very good. In a thin fashion. Okay, very good. That is that is exactly what it does. That reagent adds to hydroxide to the carbon carbon double bond in a cis uh, uh, fashion or thin fashion. Thin or cis. Okay. Let me raise this here. Okay, so what do we get here? Uh, okay, let me take this off. Okay, so we do add to... Now, what is the stereochemistry of this reaction? And does anybody know the stereochemistry of this reaction? You say C. Okay, C. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, you already told us. Okay, so therefore, the uh, the hydroxide, the two hydroxide will be added in this. Uh, this is messing up. Okay, take this off. Take this off. Okay, let us show the stereochemistry. So you now have. Hydroxide, hydroxide, and then the metal will be coming at you, and of course the hydrogen that was here before will also be coming at you. So now these are the two groups that were added by this reagent, these two hydroxy groups, okay? Note, note the stereochemistry here. Okay, very good. So that's a thin dial. Very good. Cis or cis dial. Very good. Okay. About G. About G. What happened with G? What do we get with G? Addition of element of water. Anti Marconikov addition. Excellent. Very good. Anti Marconikov addition. So let us see that. So now let us do G. This is borane, that's BH3. Then you follow it up with hydrogen peroxide in basic medium. So what do we get? We get addition of addition of water. And this is also a stereospecific reaction. And also it is also regiospecific. BH3. Notice here, folks, when you do this, you have to indicate that the BH3 is added first. Do step one, you need to do that. Then step two, you add the hydrogen peroxide, okay? You do not add both of them at the same time because that will cause problems with that reaction. Okay, so what do we get? This reagent here, uh, it will perform hydration. 
hydration in the uh, anti macronical uh, fashion. Anti macronical macronical hydration. In other words, we are going to add the elements of water across the carbon carbon double bond. So, what does that mean? That means that the hydrogen goes here and the hydroxide goes here. Okay? So, therefore, let us show that the hydrogen goes here and the hydroxide goes here. Also, notice the stereochemistry of this reaction. This reaction is Regio specific because the hydrogen goes to a particular position on the double bond. It is also stereo specific because in this case we form uh, the cis addition product. In other words, this hydrogen and this hydroxide they are added uh, to the carbon carbon double bond from the same side of the uh, of the molecule. Okay, so it is a stereo specific reaction. Very good. Okay, now let us do this. About uh, H. What does H do? H. Anybody know what uh, we get with H? This reagent here. Whenever you see chloroform, by the way, this is chloroform right here. <laughs> it's here, folks. Oh, uh, no, it's not a fox. I know what you are, I know what you are referring to. It is cyclopropane, not a foxide. We start two uh, chlorine atom attached to the carbon. Okay, very good. So anyway, this reagent here. Anytime you see this, this is chloroform in the presence of potassium hydroxide. Anytime you see that, this is what it does. What it does is to add this group. Okay, it does this group across the carbon carbon double bond. In other words, two are this carbon that is attached to two chlorine atoms to the carbon carbon double bond. So, therefore, what do we get? Let us write this here. So, we have chloroform. In the presence of potassium hydroxide, and therefore we get this product right here. So you you end up getting a cyclopropane ring. Cyclopropane ring in which the two uh, fluorine atoms are attached to the carbon of the cyclopropane ring. Okay, don't the cis have serochemistry? Yes, yeah, the serochemistry where the this here is, is added on this on, on this on one side of the ring. Uh, the double bond, you could either get the uh, cyclopropane ring going away from you, just as we have here, or you could have it so that it is also coming at you. For example, it could be this here. So you end up getting a mixture of uh, stereoisomers. You could also get this. In this case, the the uh, messy group is going away from you, and the hydrogen will be going away from you. So either of these two products could be formed. Okay. Okay. Now we are moving right along. Okay. So let us do I. I. What does I? The uh, ozonolysis. Ozone followed by zinc in acidic medium. What does it do? Anybody? What does that reagent do? Let me take this out. Okay, oxidative cleavage. Okay, you need to be very specific now. 
Okay, become okay. Carbon with no hydrogen becomes a ketone. Very good. About the carbon with hydrogen, what does that become? You need to be very specific with this reagent. Becomes an aldehyde. Excellent. Excellent. So therefore, whenever you have that reagent, it will cleave a carbon-carbon double bond such that the carbon of the carbon-carbon double bond, in this case, that has an hydrogen, this carbon becomes the carbonyl of an aldehyde. And this carbon here that does not have an hydrogen becomes the carbonyl of a ketone. So you need to be very clear as to what this reagent do. Okay, so what do we have here? We have ozonolysis, step one. And also you do need to indicate that these are two processes. You do the uh, ozone reaction first, and then you follow that all with uh, zinc in acidic medium. Okay, you do not simply uh, just add this and this together and say uh, they will work. That will not work, okay? Okay, so what is the reaction here? We are going to cleave this, and then once we cleave that becomes, okay, let us say here, this, this is uh, this here. Keep in mind that nothing happened to the rest of the molecule, okay, and this one becomes a carbonyl of an aldehyde. And this one here becomes carbonyl of a ketone. Okay? Very good. Okay, so far, no question. How about uh, J? How about J? What does this do? Does anybody know what this uh, acid will do in the presence of a carbon carbon? Excellent. Maconikov addition of water. Excellent. Okay, anytime you see this is dilute acid here, anytime you see this and you see a carbon carbon double bond, what that is telling you, you are going to get a Maconikov addition of water, right? the, the component of water. So that is similar to what you get with the mercuric acetate followed by sodium borohydride. Okay, very good. So we don't, uh, we don't need to go through that. So you, everybody should know that by now, similar to what this one does. Okay, so let us go to the next one. Okay, let us go to K. Let us go to K. What does K do? Chlorine in the presence of a carbon-carbon double. Halogenation, trans addition, excellent. Trans addition of halogen. Okay, so in this case, this is simply going to add two chlorine atoms across the carbon carbon double bond, and this is a trans addition reaction. And the same reaction would uh, take place if you use a uh, bromine. Either bromine or chlorine will give the same type of product. Okay, so therefore, I'll go ahead and write this here. See that bromine or chlorine will give the same type of product. Okay, chlorine in the presence of a carbon-carbon double bond. So we have the rest of the molecule is still there. Nothing happened to them because our focus is on the carbon-carbon double bond. Now we now have chlorine is here, and then we say it is a trans addition reaction, and that chlorine is here. That means the metal is going away from you. And the hydrogen that was here before, that will also uh, be going away from you at this point. I'm sorry, that will be coming at us, okay? Okay, so this chlorine is going away from you, and this chlorine is coming to you, so that's a trans additional reaction. In other words, the two chlorine atoms are added uh, on the opposite side of the ring system. Okay? 
very good. How about this one here? This L. What does this reagent do? Sans, okay, excellent. Sans hydroxylation, okay. This is sans hydroxylation. That is for this reagent here. Now, that is the opposite of what you get with uh, osmond tetroxide. With osmond tetroxide, we get the cis hydroxylation. With osmond tetroxide, we get cis hydroxylation. So they do complement each other. Hydroxylation simply means you are adding two hydroxy groups across the carbon carbon double bond. Okay, so what is the product? Let me erase all of this. Okay, so what do we have here? We have, we start with uh, m chloroparbenzoic acid, which stands for metachloro metachloro parbenzoic acid and that is step one and then in step two you add the dilute acid okay and in that case now we get the hydroxylation in which the hydroxy group are trans to each other And of course, the methyl group that was there before will still be here. And the hydrogen that was there before is also still here. Okay? So you see the hydroxy group, they are trans to each other. Now, in this particular reaction, supposing are these the only reagents we need to... Oh, no, 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 no. These are not... You need to know all of the reagents. It just so happens... It just so happens that these are the reagents in this set of questions. No, do not uh, think that these are the only reagents you need to know. You need to know all of the reagents that we have been studying uh, since the beginning of the semester. Okay? So, now supposing... I just give you this here. Let me erase this. Supposing I just give you this here, what would be the product? Supposing I give you this what, epoxide, exactly. That would be a you form an epoxide. You form an epoxide, okay? In other words, this reagent here who simply give you an epoxide, which in effect is the addition of oxygen across the carbon-carbon double bond, so therefore you form an epoxide. Take this, okay. Oxygen is here, and so we call this an epoxide. This is a three-member ring in which you have oxygen atom is one of the uh, component of the three member ring. Okay, uh, in this case, the stereochemistry, of course, the epoxide is on one side of the ring system, and that means that the hydrogen is going away from you. Okay, go ahead and ask your question. Somebody wants to ask me a question. Go ahead. Okay, can somebody you go over what you meant? Go ahead. Like, can you go over the epoxide again? Say that again. Can you go over the no, epoxide? What, I now was, what I'm okay. If you, if if this reagent here, this M chloroparbenzoic acid, this here, all this reagent does is to add an oxygen across the carbon carbon double bond to form an epoxide, and that's what you see here. Okay? That is what this reagent would do. Okay, that is that that is all it does. So if I just give you this here, if I give you any double bond, any carbon-carbon double bond, 
and I give you this reagent, then you have to give me an epoxy. Okay? Okay. On the other hand, if I give you this reagent, and then I say step one, and then I follow it up with uh, dilute acid, at that point the epoxy will open up, and then you're going to form the uh, the the dial, okay? Trans dial, in which case you then form this. You form the trans dial. Okay. Uh, this allergen is here. Okay. So at this point, I think we have done enough about uh, just familiarizing ourselves with the reagents, and I do advise you to go back and know all of those reagents. It is most important. You cannot do anything in organic chemistry unless unless you know your reagents. Okay. Go to the next one. <coughs> okay. Let us see here. Jaconda, uh, go ahead and read this question first. Provide a synthetic scheme for each one of the following compounds, starting with acetylene. Okay, uh, thank you. I'm very good. Now, okay, what you see here, now we want to begin to get into synthesis. And in synthesis, you now begin to use all of the reagents that you know of uh, that uh, we have uh, come across during the uh, course of this, uh, of this semester. Okay, so what do we want to do here? You want to start with acetylene, starting with acetylene, which is this here. Now they tell you to make cis 2 exene. So you need to make this here, cis 2 exene. Okay, so therefore, cis 2 exene this here and this here, exene okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that is what we need to make. So what how do you approach this? Okay, somebody has given us something here. Say we have to do uh, alkylation. We start with sodium uh, amide and then follow it up with. Okay, very good. Now, the rationale to this is if you. Very good. That, that's a very good suggestion, by the way. So we start with sodium amide first, but all of you say that. Great. Very good. So now, the rationale to this is if you look at the, pro the problem you have to solve, you want to go from acetylene, which contains only two carbon atoms, and then you need to make a molecule that contains six carbon atoms. So therefore you have to think that somehow you have you need to extend the carbon carbon chain by uh, by forming new carbon carbon bond. So I will start off by assuming that here this here will be my original acetylene uh, uh, starting material. That will be the assumption that I will make uh, if that, uh, if you make that assumption, that means that you then have to do alkylation involving this here and another alkylation involving this here. Okay, so you have to do two alkylation. Okay, and I think that is what you guys are suggesting. Okay, excellent. That is good. Okay, I see your suggestion here. So let us go ahead and see this. Uh, what we need to do here. You've already given us the synthetic uh, process, so sodium amide, step one, sodium amide. Okay, somebody asked uh, whether th those were the only uh, reagent we need to know. Keep in mind that the reagent that we are using now, we did not use this in the last problem set, okay? Okay, then we follow this up with uh, uh, let us do the, this articulation here with two add methyl iodide or methyl bromide. It doesn't really matter. So at this point, you get this product here. 
Let's go one step at a time. So we get this product. Okay. So now we've added this methyl group. Okay. Okay. You guys have given the complete uh, synthetic scheme, uh, but for the benefit of those uh, who will be watching this video, let me go ahead and give the uh, the uh, the step by step uh, process. So now you then have the next step is to do another alkylation. Step one. Sodium amide again, and then you follow it up with. Uh, in this case, you could use a uh, bromopropane. I'll say step two. Or you could use iodo if you want. Okay, in that case, you now form this here. You see H three. The triple bond is here, and then you now do your alkylation. So at this point, we have extended the extended the carbon chain. Somebody asked a question. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, you guys are communicating with each other. Very good. Okay, so finally, what do we need to do now? We now we have extended the carbon chain. What do we need to do now? Linda Cassis, excellent. Now we need to use Linda Cartridge. Okay, so let me take this out, take this out, take this out. So now we now use Linda Cartridge. So Linda Cartridge will now be what we need to do here: hydrogen and Linda. And what Linda will do is simply take a carbon-carbon triple bond. And convert the carbon carbon triple bond to a cis alkene. Very good. Excellent. Okay, so let us finish the process. Okay, now if everybody is happy with that, give me a happy face. I see we are happy face already. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so now let us go to the next one. Let us go to the next one, okay? So I am going to erase all of this. I know some of you are writing down notes, so uh, so let me go ahead and I hope you have finished writing down your notes. Let me erase this. Now the next one we want to do, this should be easy, uh, obtain. Okay, so now we want to go from uh, here to here. That should be easy. Seven carbon. That's four, five, six, seven. So what do we do? Can anybody give us what to do? Okay, okay, okay. So, how do you want to do this? Uh, do you want to do one alkylation or two alkylation? One, okay. Well, to make it easy for yourself, why don't you simply do one? Exactly. You will just do one alkylation. Uh, take a look at this. You need to think of this as your. Think of this as your original carbon-carbon triple bond. In that case, you simply you are going to add this here. This is your alkylation, alkylating uh, agent here. How many carbon? One, two, three, four, five. So that's all you do. Okay. So let us do that. So we start with step one: sodium amide. Step two, the alkylating agent, bromo, uh, bromopentane.
and so that gives us this here that will give us this here Okay, once we get that now, what do we do now? So when you use with a no, no, they are not linear and hydrogen are not interchangeable. They are completely different reaction. Now, keep in mind at this point, what we need to do here is to completely reduce the carbon carbon triple bond to an alkane. So that's all we have to do here. Okay, so at this point we simply now take our hydrogenation, take hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst, either platinum or palladium, completely reduces the carbon carbon triple bond to give the alkane. Okay, that is very good. So now let us do this last one here. Okay, I am going to erase this. Okay, what does this one tell us to do? Okay, what do we need to do here? We want to make this ketone here. How many carbon here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this is what they want us to do here. Two, three. So they want us to make a methyl ketone. So what is the synthetic strategy you are going to use here? What do you think we should do? Okay. Okay, so the mama you go to somewhere down the road you're going to have to use mercury sulfate. Excellent. So the way you think of this, imagine that this here imagine that this part of the molecule here was your original carbon carbon triple bond right here. If you imagine that, in other words, in that case, in that case, that means you are going to do alkylation, okay, with four carbon atoms, right? You see right here, okay, you do alkylation with four carbon atoms, so let us do that. Okay, and then we follow that up with mercury sulfate, just as you guys have suggested. Very good. So I see you guys are getting ready for tomorrow's exam. Okay, so we have our alkylation again, sodium amide. Step two, we use the alkylating agent, bromobutane or iodobutane. And then, of course, that gives you this here. Then you have your carbon carbon triple bond. So at this point, what do we do now? What do we do at this point? Okay, you guys have already given us the clue. What do we do at this point? Oh, let me see. Okay, we add the mercury sulfate. Okay, very good. Mercury sulfate. Okay, so at this point you add your mercury sulfate. The mercury sulfate. Okay, in the acidic medium, we'll take a terminal alkyne, a terminal alkyne, and uh, <coughs> we have the terminal alkyne to form a methyl ketone. Methyl ketone. Okay, very good. So we have finished that. Okay. So now let us go to the next one.
Okay, this should be very easy here. Do you want us to do this or you could do this? Uh, if you want us to do this, give me yes. Do. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, let us just, this should be very simple. Let us simply run, run through this. This one here, you want to go from it, a terminal alkyne to uh, to this molecule here. So that means you are forming a new carbon carbon bond. That is uh, all of those reactions that we just did. Okay, so you simply do sodium amide again. And then you follow that always uh, methyl bromide. Okay, so that takes care of that. L butter B. In B, what are we doing with B? Okay, what is going on here? Let us see. Uh, we start. We are starting with this starting material. How many carbon? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then we want to end up with one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we are we starting with we are starting with six carbon atom, and we are going to end up with six carbon atom. So in essence, what we need to do here. We are going to do what we call a functional group transformation. Functional group transformation. In other words, we want to go from one functional group to another functional group. This reaction does not involve the formation of a carbon carbon bond. Okay, so what do we do? Okay, okay, prominent. Okay. Then dehydrohalogenation, excellent. Okay, so we do this. We do bromination of the carbon carbon double bond, right? That's what you guys want us to do. Uh, bromination. Okay, and that will form the dibromo compound. Now you form once you form that at this point then what do we do at this point to get to here? Okay, then potassium hydroxide. Excellent, excellent, very good. So you guys are making my job very easy today. Now we do potassium hydroxide. so now we do dehydroallogenation. Okay? So this is actually double di. This is what I will call double di hydro allogenation. In other words, we are going to remove uh, allogen bromide uh, twice. Okay, to end up getting this uh, product here. Okay, so that is everybody is happy with that. Let us do the last one here. Take this off. Okay. Okay, now what do we need to do here? We are going from a, a terminal alkyne to an aldehyde. Let us see how many carbon do we have here. We have one, two, three, four, and five. So five carbon to start with. And how many carbon are we ending up with? One, two, three, and four. So somehow we have go we have to lose a carbon atom here. Okay, so what do we need to do here? And by the way, we are at the end. You are going to form an aldehyde. This is a condensed formula for aldehyde. Okay, so this is this formula here. Somebody said potassium hydroxide. No, potassium hydroxide will give you carboxylic acid. Okay, potassium hydroxide will. So this is what we need to form. You need to form an aldehyde.
Okay, we need to form an aldehyde. So, so apparently we have to cleave the, a carbon-carbon double bond somehow. Now, if you simply just take this and react this with potassium hydroxide, what this will give you, it will cleave this, and then you get a carboxylic acid. So you don't want to do that. Okay, so in this case, but before you do uh, ozonolysis, you need to transform this into a carbon-carbon double bond because if you just do ozonolysis on this, then you're also going to form a, car a carboxylic acid. Yes, somebody's got it right. So the first thing we do is the Lindler uh, reaction. So we do Lindler first. Hydrogen uh, in the presence of Lindler catalyst. Okay, and that gives you the carbon-carbon double bond that you need. So in the, all of these uh, processes, you, you have to think of the, uh, the, not only of the product, you also have to think of the starting material and what kind of reagent you will need. So this case will now form a carbon-carbon double bond. That's what Linda will give us. Okay, and at this point, then uh, after this, then you do your ozonolysis. And then you do step one, ozone, then step two, zinc in dilute acid. Okay? If, is that clear to all of you? If it is, give me a happy face. Okay, somebody asked, why can't you do borane uh, with uh, hydrogen peroxide? Borane with hydrogen peroxide, remember, that gives you hydration. That will add, two, uh, two, uh, uh, that will add the elements of water in an antimicronical fashion. So uh, do not mix the borane with hydrogen peroxide with uh, uh, the ozonolysis reaction. Okay, so let us go to the next one. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, am I missing a carbon? So I'm yeah. Missing a carbon. Where did the other okay, carbon go? Yeah, oh, oh. Let's see here. One, two, three, four. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Let's make this. Uh, yes. Okay. I am missing a carbon, so it should be CH2 and then CH3. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now let us go to next one. Okay, do you want us to do this? This problem, yes or no? Yes, okay, very good. Okay, uh, uh, Maya, can you go ahead and read this question for us? Proposed structures for the following compounds. Thank you. Very good. Okay, now what they want us what they want us to do now is propose structures for the following compounds. I believe we've done some of it this in, in class, but let us do this again. Uh, the first one is C five H ten with one oxygen. Keep in mind keep in mind what you need to do here, you need the structure you have to propose must conform with all of the requirements they've given you. Here, uh, the whatever structure you, uh, you develop must have only two PLMR signals. Okay? So therefore, you simply have to work out all kind of combinations here. Uh, in other words, you have only two types of hydrogen. So I would say, I uh, also think of your index of hydrogen deficiency. The index of hydrogen deficiency here is one. Okay, so keep that in mind. So I would say, okay, this is a possibility. That's a possible structure. In which case, you have two types of hydrogen here. This type, these are equivalent, and then this metal and this metal. Are equivalent. So you are going to get two signals, two PNMR signals. Go ahead. 
Okay, what is the question? Okay, I did not get any questions. You could pick up the mic because somebody is trying to ask me a question here. Okay, can you do D? Okay. Okay, let me do D here. Okay, very good. Since we've done this and this already. Okay, let us do D. This one here, you have C7. Yeah, this is a very interesting one. Can you please assume um, part D? Say that again. Can you say that again? Okay, well. Okay, I have to hardly hear what you are saying. Anyway, let us do D. Let us do D. And the formula here is C7, H14, and one oxygen. Now, what you have here, the index of hydrogen deficiency here, IHD, equals to 1. Okay? So that means you could have a double bond or ring. So, uh, in this case, you simply have to work at all kinds of possibilities. You only have three singlets. You have three singlets. So, one, one possibility that I will come up with would be this here, this here, this here, this here. I say three singlets. Keep in mind how many uh, carbon do we have here? Seven carbon. So far I have one, two, three, right? So therefore I need to have this molecule so that I have three singlets. This could be. So you really do need to work out all kind of possibilities here. This is here. I'm sure there is some other possibility that you guys could think of. Okay, if you look at this, this metal and this metal are equivalent. Okay, since there is no hydrogen here, this will give a singlet. This, their chemical shift will be a singlet. The same thing for this and this are equivalent. Their chemical shift will also be a singlet since there is no hydrogen here. And then finally, this CH2 right here, Okay, this CA2 here does not see any hydrogen here or here, so it will also be a singlet. So in, in other words, this molecule will have three signals in its proton NMR spectrum. Do we follow that? So what you need to do here, you really do need to work out all kinds of possibilities, but this is one possibility that you could think of. Uh, keep, uh, the only thing you need to be aware of do not violate any uh, valence rule. Do not violate any uh, octet rule, uh, because then you uh, you'll be, uh, uh, you uh, you you be breaking all kind of rules, and the molecule that you draw uh, may not be real molecules. But as uh, somebody say, and corners step. No, they they cannot be separated because there is no hydrogen here. There is no hydrogen here, so that is why they are singlet. Okay, very good. So now let us go to the next one. I think uh, let us spend five, uh, ten more minutes before we leave. It is after ten. Okay. Let us see here. Okay. About this one here, let us try B. Ten more minutes. Okay, very good. Uh, let us uh, try B. Uh, does anybody have an idea what B will look like? In this case, you have formula in C3 and six hydrogen and three oxygen atoms and 5.5 .5, uh, chemical shift singlet, six hydrogen. Must be singlet. In other words, you must have only one type of hydrogen in this molecule. So, just like all the other problems with a uh, spectroscopic problem, you really need to work out all kind of possibilities here. Somebody say ring. Okay, the index of hydrogen deficiency here, IHD, equals to 1. So it could be a ring or it could be a double bond. Okay, you say ring. Okay, what kind of ring are you going to, are you suggesting here? Okay, you, are you saying this kind of ring? Let us see here. 
Okay, are you saying this here? Yeah. I don't know whether that is correct. Uh, you have you have six oxygen. How are you going to draw this ring? Okay, this here, yeah, right? Uh, this here yeah, cannot be true. Okay, you have one more oxygen, right? Okay, let me draw this properly. Let us see, would it be a possibility? Is that possible? Does it fit the formula they're giving us? Yes or no? Does it fit the form? Yes. Everybody agree to that? Okay, is there any other possibility? In other words, all of this here could be 5.5. Okay, because you have C H two next to two oxygen, so five point five is reasonable. Plus these are all methyl methylene groups will be equivalent. And they will all be singlet. So this is a correct one. Okay, I will also give you another possibility. Supposing we have this. Keep in mind you could draw anything that you that fits the information they give you as long as you are not violating any of the organic chemistry rules, okay? So this is a possibility. That is dimethyl carbonate. Dimethyl Okay, does that fit? Yes or no? Does that fit? Yes or no? Give me yes or no. Yes, it fits because this energy, this metal and this metal are equivalent, and they could also be 5.5. Okay, very good. Okay, somebody said let us do 27. Let us see where 27 is. Okay, so now we finish with this. Let us see what else we have. Okay, starting with the propane using. Okay, let us see. Somebody said. 27, let us see what that is. Okay, how about this here? Let us do 33. Let us do 33 before this year. Uh, Ryan, can you go ahead and read 33 for us? Compound A, C10, H18, O, undergoes reaction with dilute H2SO4 to yield a mixture of two alkenes, B and C, with molecular formulas C10, H16. The major alkene product, B, gives only cyclopentanol, a ketone, after ozone treatment, followed by reduction with zinc and acetic acid. Write structures for A, B, and C, and write the reaction. Okay, very good, and thank you. Okay, so this is a case in which this is what we call the road map problem. Uh, this is a case in which you definitely need to know all of your reagents. So, you start with compound A. And the formula is C10 H18 O. Then one oxygen. Now, what is the index of hydrogen deficiency of this molecule? We are going to do 32 before we leave. Okay? Okay, 2. You said 2? Very good. So that means this molecule will have either two rings, two double bonds, or triple bonds. Okay. Now they say compound A undergoes reaction with um, mercury as with sulfuric acid, dilute acid, to use a, to a mixture of alkenes. In other words, what they are telling us is that this compound here we have with dilute sulfuric acid to get two alkenes B and C and the formula for both of those is C10 C10 H16 so let me ask you this how, what is the index of hydrogen deficiency of either compound B or compound C with this formula here? Okay, three. So in other words, just as they have told us, this is uh, dehydration. So 
They are performing dehydration here, so forming a new carbon-carbon, forming a carbon-carbon double bond. Okay. Now, they now say that B, which is the major alkene product, gives only cyclopentanone uh, after reaction with ozone. Okay. So now they say this one here, B, We have this ozone. Follow this now. Okay, to give cyclopentanone. Okay, to give this here. So, what does that tell you about compound B? What does that tell you about compound B? And also, we know what uh, this reagent will do. Okay, let me ask you this. What does this reagent do? Okay, this, what does this reagent do? Let us see here. This reagent, what does it do? We already used it several times already. But you notice, it. what will it do? Okay, you need to know what this reagent do to solve this problem. Because this compound B reacts with this, to form this, okay. If that is the, if that is what they're telling us, cleaves a carbon-carbon double bond exactly. So what that is telling us, and that this compound B only reacts with this to give only this here. So what that is telling us is that compound B must be this here. They are telling us that compound B must be this here. That is what they, t they are telling us now, that compound B must be this molecule. Okay, do you follow that? In other words, no, I'm sorry, not, uh, not cyclohexane. Must be this here, because the reason why it must be that is because we are going to cleave this Okay, to form this with ozonolysis. Okay, do you follow that? If you follow that, give me a preface. So that is what this is. this is telling us here. That compound B must be compound B must be this. Now, so if we accept the fact that compound B must be this, okay, we are, we then know that compound B came from compound A. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Ask your question. Well, you, okay, the key to this is, they say compound B reacts with ozone, ozonolysis, to give this. The question is, what does uh, this reagent do? You guys already told us that this reagent will cleave a carbon-carbon double bond to form a ketone. So if you are only getting this, that means there was a carbon-carbon double bond here. That is how you are only able to get this, okay? Now, if that is the case, then we also know that compound B comes from here as a result of dehydration, okay? We know that compound B comes from compound A as a, as a, result, as a result of dehydration. So let me ask you this. When we say dehydration, what do we mean by dehydration? What do we mean by dehydration? Anybody? Take a example, you're going to remove water, so that means, therefore, that compound A must be this. That means compound A must be this here. Let me take this out. Compound A must be this. Compound A must be this. Okay? In which you have an hydroxy group attached to this carbon here because after you do your dehydration, 
you you form a carbon carbon double bond right here. Okay, keep in mind they say we are going to form two alkenes. One is compound B, which is the most stable alkene, and then the other is compound C. So therefore, what will be the structure of so now we say this is compound A. Okay? So therefore, what will be the structure of compound C? Keep in mind, after the dehydration, you form two products. One is B, and then they say the other is another alkene that is less stable. So let me label this here. Let me say this is position one. This is position two. OK, this is position three position 4, position 5. Okay, at this point, let us say this is position 6. At this point, we did dehydration and we form a carbon-carbon double bond between position 2 and position 6. So therefore, where is the other carbon-carbon double bond going to be? It's inside the ring between, between 1 and Okay, between two and three, that is fine. Okay, very good. So you guys got the answer. Okay, so therefore, compound C must be this here. So you really have to use some logic here. So therefore, compound C must be this. So this is compound C. So we got everything that we need. These are compound C right here as a result of the addition of compound A. This is our compound A. Let me take this out. This is our compound A right here. And this is our compound B. So the, the clue to all of this is you must know what those reagents do. If you do not know what the reagents do, you cannot do this. Yeah, go ahead and ask your question. OK, we, I will try to pose this as by tomorrow morning. OK, okay so folks, uh, we have done this. Let us now finally do 32. 32, this is reaction mechanism before we leave. OK, let us see here. Uh, hopefully we can do this in five minutes. Okay, so let me go ahead and erase this. I'm going to erase this now. Okay, I hope that is okay with all of you. Okay, good. Okay, 432. Uh, let me call uh, Brianna Neal. Can you go ahead and read question 32 for us? HBr reacted with 3,3-dimethyl cyclohexane to give 1-bromo, 1,2-dimethyl cyclohexane. Provide a mechanism for the reaction using arrows to indicate the direction of electron movement. At each step, identify the nuclear file in the electrophile. OK, thank you. I'm very good. OK, so now what do they want us to do here? <coughs> you have. Uh, Hydrogen bromide is reacting with 3,3-dimethyl uh, cyclohexene. So you need to know the structure of that molecule. So this is 3,3. Now, if you don't know the structure of that molecule, you cannot do this problem. So because they are also testing your knowledge of uh, nomenclature, OK? OK, so 3,3-dimethyl. Three three dimethyl. Okay, keep in mind this is position one, position two, position three, four, five, and six. So that's three three dimethyl cyclohexene. And then they told us that this is going to react with hydrogen bromide. to give 1-bromo, one 1-2-dimethyl one cyclohexane. 
Okay, so you need to know what that structure is. One bromo, one to dimethyl cyclohexane, so it will give this product here. One to dimethyl, one bromo, bromine is here, methyl is here, and another methyl is here. Okay, so that is one to dimethyl, one, one bromo, one to dimethyl cyclohexane, which is this here. Now they tell us to provide a mechanism for this transformation. Okay, let us do that before we leave. Take this out. Okay, does anybody know what is the first thing that will happen for the mechanism? Uh, you have to show all of the arrows. What is the first thing that will happen? Anybody? What is the first thing that happens? You have a carbon carbon double bond here. Okay, what would that do? Okay, carbo <laughs> carbocation formation. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. So now, what happens? Okay, so let us do here. You say we have the carbon carbon double bond will attack the hydrogen bromide. Okay. In this case, the carbon-carbon double bond will be acting. Uh, in this case, start off as a as an uh, as, as a base, you know, acting to react with this acid here, and then you break this hydrogen bromine bond will break. Uh, this hydrogen will add to this here. Keep in mind, originally we do have an hydrogen here, so let us keep track of that. Okay, so what do we get to get this? The hydrogen was there before, it's still here. And now the hydrogen that is now added now will be here. Okay, and once you do that, you form a carbocation here. That is what uh, one of you just told us. And keep in mind that we see have this here, this metal is here, and this metal is here. Okay, so let me ask you this. What kind of carbocation has, uh, has formed here? Oh, okay, you cannot hear me. What kind of carbocation has formed right here? Secondary carbocation, okay. If you form a secondary carbocation, then what do you think is going to happen now? This is where we want to go. What do you think will happen? What do you think will happen now? Because this is where we want to go. By the way, the bromide is also here somewhere. Oh, alkyl ship, excellent, excellent. Okay, we are going to get an alkyl shift. Very good. That is correct. So now we get an alkyl shift. Alkyl shift. And one of these, the metal group will shift. It will shift to form a more stable carbocation, which is a tertiary carbocation. So therefore, you form this. Okay, shift to here. Now keep in mind this hydrogen are still here. At this point you will now form a tertiary carbocation, which is now here. Now what do you think will happen now? What would what will happen now? What will happen next? Okay, the bromide now attacks. The bromide now acts as a nucleophile to attack the tertiary carbocation. So let me change the color of the pen. The bromide attacks the tertiary carbocation. Okay, and then once it does that, you get this product here. Okay, so let us label everything. So in this case, 
the bromide acts as a that's your nucleophile. They, they tell you you need to identify all of the reacting species. In this case, that is your nucleophile. And here, the carbocation is your electrophile right here. Okay? And in the first part of this reaction here, the, uh, the, the carbon, the pi electron of the carbon carbon double bond, you could refer to that also as your nucleophile. Or in this case, you could also say it is a base because it is reacting with a proton or base. Okay? Okay, so that is the mechanism of this process. In other words, what, are they, are told, what did they tell us to do? You have to give a reaction mechanism showing all of the arrows. The arrows show how the electron uh, uh, movement is taking place. Keep in mind, when you draw an arrow like this, you are saying two electrons are moving. Okay, that's what you are saying here. Okay, so you need to show all of the arrows showing uh, the movement of electron here. The bond, uh, bond between hydrogen and bro uh, bromine is breaking heterolytically. Yes, go ahead. Ask your question. Could you show the metal shift? Well, this is the met met yeah, that's what I've shown here. Oh, no, 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 no. The, the metal shift cannot move. The reason why you have to show the metal shift before the bromine attack is because you have to form a carbocation. Once the bromine attacks, there, there cannot be a metal shift because at that point there is no longer a carbocation. Okay? Uh, I think we have spent almost one and a half hours now, so I do not want this uh, video, video to be too long because if it is longer, you may not be able to open it. Uh, is, is there any other question before we leave? Okay, at this point, uh, we should call it a day. No, the, the metal shift occurs before, before the bromine attack. Yeah, go ahead and ask your question. Okay, at this point, I think let us call it a day. This uh, the time is well spent already. Uh, I'm going to uh, turn off the uh, uh, the recorder, and I will stay on for another five minutes for those of you who want to ask me additional questions. Uh, so until I see you uh, tomorrow, I say make the best best use of the rest of your evening. Those of you who want to stay behind to ask questions, go ahead and. I'll stay for another five minutes. So I'm going to turn the recorder on, off. Okay, the session will be officially over. So see you tomorrow, folks.